Ever feel like your brain's on a treadmill? Just scrolling and scrolling, but going nowhere. Totally. It's like we're bombarded with information constantly. Yeah, social media, the news, article after article, it's overwhelming. Seriously overwhelming. And you start to think, is more information actually making me, well, wiser? Right. That's and that's exactly what got us thinking about this deep dive today. Yeah. We found this really thought-provoking piece all about wisdom, especially in our age of information overload, and we had to unpack it. A good one. Because the question is, can we actually use this information to live better lives? That's the question, isn't it? What I find so fascinating about this piece is that it positions wisdom as the cornerstone of everything. Not just one virtue amongst many. Exactly. It argues that it's the foundation upon which all other virtues rest. Okay, so let's break that down. We're talking about courage, temperance, justice. All the good stuff. The good stuff. All those things are still important. But we need wisdom to truly use them well. Right. Why is that? Why is wisdom the key? And not just, you know, focusing on being brave or fair. I think that's where judgment comes in. Okay. And judgment a lot of times comes from experience or is at least honed through experience. Makes sense. So for example, imagine you see someone being treated unfairly. Okay. Courage might be that thing that compels you to step in directly. Right. But wisdom might say, okay, hold on a second. Is that going to make the situation better? Let's gather some more information first. Exactly. It might guide you to, to gather more information, maybe seek help or find a more strategic approach that's actually going to ensure a just outcome without, without escalating the situation. Right. Because sometimes stepping in can make it worse. Exactly. So it's about knowing when to act, but also how to act. Absolutely. Choosing the right action at the right time in the right way. And it actually makes me think of that timeless advice from Zeno. Oh, yeah. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. <laughs> I feel like, especially today, where everyone's shouting their opinions online, it's very, very relevant. Super relevant. Yeah. Drowning in voices. Mm -hmm. But how do we filter out all that noise? How do we actually extract the real wisdom from it all? Right. And that's where the two eyes come in. Observation. Okay. The piece talks a lot about the importance of watching others, learning from, you know, their successes, but also importantly, their failures. You can learn so much from other people's mistakes. Absolutely. But also something it stresses that I think is so crucial is self-reflection. Interesting. So looking back at our own experiences, our missteps, our triumphs, that's where we can actually begin to see where wisdom is emerging in our own lives. That reminds me so much of that quote from Epictetus, you cannot learn that which you think you already know. Oof. Yes. Like that one, it hits home. I know I've been guilty of thinking I had it all figured out at points and then quickly realize, nope, I do not. We all have, right? Which is why this idea of maintaining a beginner's mind, this willingness to learn and be wrong, it's so crucial. And, you know, we can't be afraid to seek out those teachers. Yes. Whether it's, you know, through books, through mentors, or even just life lessons in disguise. So how do we take all of this, mm -hmm. this wisdom, and actually apply it to our own lives? Because we don't just want to sound like we aced our last philosophy class. We want to embody this stuff. Totally. I think it starts with, with identifying the areas where we actually need wisdom. Mm. The piece really emphasizes being deliberate in that way. Ask yourself, am I facing a big decision right now? Yeah. Am I struggling in a relationship? Maybe I'm feeling stuck in my career. Exactly. Once we pinpoint those areas, then we can start to seek out the specific kind of wisdom that can actually guide us. And maybe that wisdom comes from that observation piece we were talking about. Absolutely. Like watching how others have navigated similar situations or reflecting on our own past experience. It all ties together, right? Mm, it really does. It makes you wonder, what's one area of your own life where you could benefit from just being a better student, totally. A better listener, a more active observer. We hold our heads high through the stormy skies. We never say die. Facing every challenge like a stoic night. With every step forward, we ignite the night. Bounce back from the falls, never showing no fear. In the darkest moments, our minds stay clear with a heart of iron and a steady aim. We charge through the pain, never seeking fame. Keep it moving, keep it strong. Push it forward all day long. Battle on Raise your voice and sing this song
From the valley's low to the highest peaks We conquer the silence even when it speaks Life's battles rage on, we never shy away Standing firm in the fray each and every day Rhythm of resilience pounding in our chest Fighting every battle, never taking rest Stoic courage flowing in our veins Through the joy and through the pains Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long This song Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage, battle on Raise your voice and sing Low to the highest peaks We conquer the silence even when it speaks Life's battles rage on We never shy away Standing firm in the fray each and every day Rhythm of resilience pounding in our chest Fighting every battle never taking rest Stoic courage flowing in our veins Through the joy and through the pains Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage battle You know, and get upset, I made a decision, right? I made a decision. I made a what? Listen to me very closely. In order to make your dreams and goals become a reality, you have to make different decisions. See, the only reason your dreams aren't happening now is two reasons. It's, it's too early, right? It's too early. What do I mean when I say it's too early? Okay, so if you're in high school, you can't play in the NBA. Right, it's too early. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not time yet. And a lot of you struggle with that. A lot of young people, you struggle because you got these big dreams and these big goals and you want them to happen right now. You want them to happen today. Right? Look, you got the rest of your life to live. So what would happen if all your dreams became a reality when you was 15? You got 65 more years to live, 70 more years to live, 80 more years to live. My grandma just passed. They both were in their 90s. So if you're 15 years old, you got 80 years left. Are you hearing me? You can't make all your dreams become a reality in one day or in one year, right? So say this with me. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. You can't, you can't, for, you can't make yourself 21 at 15. I don't care how... The meaning of life is to give life meaning. We live only now. Everything else is either past or is unknown. If you make a mistake and do not correct it, this is called a mistake. Confucius. An optimist is a person who sees a green light everywhere, while a pessimist sees only the red stoplight. The truly wise person is colorblind. Whoever fights can lose, whoever doesn't fight has already lost. Vague goals produce vague results. Jack Canfield. Against those who lament over being pitied. I am grieved, a man says, at being pitied. Whether then is the fact of your being pitied a thing which concerns you or those who pity you? Well, is it in your power to stop this pity? It is in my power if I show them that I do not require pity. And whether then are you in the condition of not deserving pity, or are you not in that condition? I think I am not. But these persons do not pity me for the things for which if they ought to pity me, it would be proper, I mean, for my faults. But they pity me for my poverty, for not possessing honorable offices, for diseases and deaths, and other such things. 
Whether then are you prepared to convince the many that not one of these things is an evil, but that it is possible for a man who is poor and has no office and enjoys no honor to be happy, or to show yourself to them as rich and in power? For the second of these things belong to a man who is boastful, silly, and good for nothing, and consider by what means the pretense must be supported. It will be necessary for you to hire slaves and to possess a few silver vessels, and to exhibit them in public if it is possible, though they are often the same, and to attempt to conceal the fact that they are the same, and to have splendid garments, and all other things for display, and to show that you are a man honored by the great, and to try to sup at their houses, or to be supposed to sup there, and as to your person to employ some mean arts, that you may appear to be more handsome and nobler than you are. These things you must contrive, if you choose to go by the second path, in order not to be pitied. But the first way is both impracticable and long, to attempt the very thing which Zeus has not been able to do, to convince all men what things are good and bad. Is this power given to you? This only is given to you, to convince yourself and you have not convinced yourself. Then I ask you, do you attempt to persuade other men, and who has lived so long with you as you with yourself, and who has so much power of convincing you as you have of convincing yourself, and who is better disposed and nearer to you than you are to yourself? How then, have you not convinced yourself in order to learn at present are not things upside down. Is this what you have been earnest about doing? To learn to be free from grief and free from disturbance, and not to be humbled, and to be free? Have you not heard, then, that there is only one way which leads to this end, to give up the things which do not depend on the will, to withdraw from them, and to admit that they belong to others? For another man, then, to have an opinion about you, of what kind is it? It is a thing independent of the will. Then is it nothing to you? It is nothing. When, then, you are still vexed at this and disturbed, do you think that you are convinced about good and evil? Will you not, then, letting others alone, be to yourself both scholar and teacher? The rest of mankind will look after this, whether it is to their interest to be and to pass their lives in a state contrary to nature. But to me no man is nearer than myself. What then is the meaning of this, that I have listened to the words of the philosophers and I assent to them, but in fact I am no way made easier? Am I so stupid? And yet, in all other things such as I have chosen, I have not been found very stupid, but I learned letters quickly, and to wrestle, and geometry, and to resolve syllogisms. Has not then reason convinced me, and indeed no other things have I from the beginning so approved and chosen. And now I read about these things, hear about them, write about them. I have so far discovered no reason stronger than this. In what then am I deficient? Have the contrary opinions not been eradicated from me? Have the notions themselves not been exercised nor used to be applied to action, but as armor are laid aside and rusted and cannot fit me? And yet neither in the exercises of the palaestra, nor in writing or reading am I satisfied with learning. But I turn up and down the syllogisms which are proposed, and I make others, and sophistical syllogisms also, but the necessary theorems, by proceeding from which a man can become free from grief, fear, passions, hindrance, and a free man, these I do not exercise myself in, nor do I practice in these the proper practice. Then I care about what others will say of me, whether I shall appear to them worth notice, whether I shall appear happy. Wretched man, will you not see what you are saying about yourself? What do you appear to yourself to be? In your opinions, in your desires, in your aversions from things, 
in your movements, in your preparation, in your designs and in other acts suitable to a man. But do you trouble yourself about this, whether others pity you? Yes, but I am pitied not as I ought to be. Are you then pained at this? And is he who is pained an object of pity? Yes. How then are you pitied not as you ought to be? This going to seem weird, but I promise y'all I know what I'm doing. It's going to seem weird, but I know what I'm doing, okay? I'm old. I know what I'm doing, all right? So put your age in there. Now what I want you to put now is how old you want to be when you leave this earth. Now here's the A. Hey, I don't care what religion, what politics. One thing we all know, we ain't going to be here forever. I, there's one thing I can guarantee y'all. You won't be living like you. You won't be a, you won't be here 150 years from now. <laughs> I can guarantee you that you won't be 150. You won't be here. So, so the real question is, how old are you? And then how long you want to be on this earth? Right? Because here's, here's why I'm, this is, this is why this is important. Because if you know you're not going to be here forever, then you're going to treat how long you're going to be here differently. So what happens sometimes when you're young, you think you're going to be young forever. I feel you. I used to be there. I woke up this morning. I was 51 years old. I was like, man, I'm 51. My grandma, I went to go see my grandma. She's 91. I was like, man, I remember my grandma was in her 40s. My grandma, 91. Now, listen to me very closely. I'm not the don't say the no to drugs, dude. Right. You, you make whatever decisions you want. You do whatever you want to do. I'm here to tell you, though, that you're not going to live forever.